Hi, I'm Representative Mindy Fee from the 37th District, and welcome to the Legislative Report. Uh, today we're here right on the edge of my district in Mount Joy Township, and we're at the Mount Joy CTC Career and Technology Center. With me today is David Warren, who's the Executive Director of the um, school and david smith who is the principal here at the school welcome well good morning welcome to our school absolutely thanks for joining us today and letting the people in the 37th district uh, find out about the little gem that we have right here absolutely <laughs> we're the best kept secret in, in lancaster county <laughs> absolutely so tell us a little bit about the program because you don't just have uh, a school here at mount joy you have schools elsewhere also that's correct we have four campuses in lancaster county we have two campuses at Willow Street, one at Brownstown and, and one at Mount Joy. And we also do training at the, the Lancaster County Public Safety Training Center. We also have a truck driving school in Chambersburg. I know, because you have many programs. And, and it's not just for high school seniors and high school children. It's also for some adult programs, correct? That's correct. We have over 50 programs. Um, we have uh, programs that run high school through specialized associate degrees. So we have uh, approximately uh, between 15 and 1600 students a year come to our, our campuses and we probably touch base with somewhere between 200 or 2,000 and 3,000 adults each wow, year. Wow, that's fantastic. Tell me something, have those numbers gone up recently? Or are they declining? Because, you know, I hear an awful lot out in the district from my businesses. So let's talk a little bit about that. They're definitely increasing. Over the last couple of years, we've seen a drastic increase. In fact, we are looking at our enrollments for next year and we're virtually full. For high school students now. That, that was my question. So let's let's pick a program because today we're going to get a, to go around and see a number of the programs. But are the programs filled to capacity now? Are there kids on wait lists, or can we still bring them in? Or most of our programs are filled to capacity. We have a possibly 25 to 30 openings across the, all the the programs, uh, and we have. Right now, the last count I got was over 230 students on wait lists. Oh my goodness. Well, I hope we expand because it's critical that we can <laughs> fill those spots. Um, We're planning on that. Yeah, it's good. It's good because, you know, number one issue, I, people talk about jobs and it's important that we get, you know, family sustaining wage jobs and Absolutely. that's what you're producing here. It is, exactly. Um, we're producing jobs that actually meet what the industry uh, says that they need in the area. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to meet all the needs for the, the numbers that we're hearing, but we're trying. Yeah, that's that's great. Well, today, we got, like I said, we get to go around and see some of the different programs. So where are we going to start? I think we're going to start down at the house we have under construction. We have some car carpentry students down there working, and I think that would be a good place to start. So you build a house from start to finish? We do. We build houses. We have uh, approximately 27 building lots on this campus that each year we, we start a house. All right. Well, hey, let's head down and, and see what they have to offer. Sounds great. Thanks. So we are at the residential carpentry program at the CTC and joining us today is Caleb and Zach. And you're within two different schools uh, that your home base schools from the area. What school do you go to, Caleb? I go to Mannheim Central. Mannheim Central. And I go to uh, Calico. Calico, great, two great school districts, I must say. So, what made you decide to come to the CTC? Because you're your senior year, you're here full day, right? So you're leaving your home school. What made you decide to come to the program? Uh, the main reason why I came here is because I really enjoyed doing like outside construction work, and I pretty much wanted to learn how to do residential carpentry. Do you have any family members or anybody that? Um, I have like I've did like home improvement stuff with my dad, but besides that, no one else really in my family has done carpentry. So let me ask you something. You're here all day. Uh, yes. And then you also have a job, right? Yeah. Um, I just recently got a co-op job at GSM Roofing, and so pretty much every Monday and Wednesday, I go out there and work a full-time job there. You talk a little bit about your co-op job, too, because it's a very important piece of the program. And then I want the uh, principal to, to kind of fill in the blanks with it. Go ahead. Where are you working? I work at uh, our remodel. It's a little company in Lidditz. We do <clears throat> any kind of interior or exterior remodeling from the basement all the way to the roof. What's your favorite part of it? Uh, Any time that we have to remodel a basement, because we have we incorporate a lot of like a lot of our framing here. So to put a uh, drywall on the walls. Perfect. And you're out two days also then? I'm out three days. Three days. Three days. So tell me about the co-op program a little bit. Do you want to pass? Uh, yes. Our, the cooperative education program is a great um, 
part of being the CTC. Students at, actually in at the second marking period, the students are ready to go out for one day and work in employment, and then the second marking period, it can increase to two days and three days, and by then, and once we're through April and our testing, it can be a four or five day position here. A lot of it leads into full-time employment here. That's what here. I was gonna say, that's and, um, the best part, it's fantastic. Yes. And the experience to... they get on a job site is, mm -hmm. and with an employer is something that we can't always give them here at the CTC. So it's a great opportunity for uh, the young men and women that we have here at Mount Joy Campus. Is it hard to find employers to participate with that program? Actually it's not. Actually we get more calls than we can actually produce students here. And so the business employment employers here in Lancaster County have been fantastic. Uh, we get calls in September looking for carpenters and welders and we're not, the students aren't ready to go out yet and um, so they're waiting and for us They're to getting produce them up and moving pretty yes. quickly. So let's talk about the house because you actually build houses here on site. Oh yeah pretty much we started this house from scratch and we did it from the concrete to the sump pump layout to walls and everything. I mean we pretty much had a basic information up there and then he pretty much just taught us on job site how to do the floor trusses and wall layout, floor layout. Do you, how long does it take to build a house here? I mean, is it is it your year, is it? Uh, typically, the first few houses that were constructed with this program were, the first one was done in a single year from top to bottom. Uh, over the next couple of years for those uh, additional houses, it took the starting of the first class and then the next year they finished it and started that and then started the next house and in this case this is that's what's going to happen this year this year we're going to finish all the framing and the roofing and then uh, this following year the students there are going to finish it and start the next program okay and I'm assuming it's not just the carpenters who are engaged in a house like no it's this, not this right? part is the carpentry but actually that's the baiting was done by our heavy equipment class out of Brownstown they come down here when this is ready the uh, electrical and construction class from Brownstown the HVAC class so they'll all come down here and spend a week two weeks however how long it takes to do that so it actually brings in the whole CTC programs that's fantastic that's fantastic so, and I had toured one of the other houses that were actually complete. How many lots are here for you to? We will have, a, we have a total of 27 lots that we have prepared in town, and Mount Joy Township has been fantastic working with us to uh, subdivide the land. Um, so it will take us about 18 months to do, a, to do a house like the young man said here. Uh, we'll start the second one in either January, probably January of next year, we'll start doing the foundation as we're finishing this one up so students can see both ends, the finished product and what it takes to begin it. Um, well, we think it's going to take us 30 some years to get the 27 houses yeah. done here. So no, we have good. plenty of time and plenty that's of uh, curriculum. All right. Well, listen, I appreciate you uh, telling us a little bit about your program and I wish you the best of luck. I know you're both set up to go right into your careers and that's a, that's a wonderful thing. Maybe I'll need you someday. I need a carpenter every once in a while, <laughs> so I appreciate it. So where are we heading next, oh. sir? Yeah, next we're going to go up to um, see our early childhood education program and the daycare that we have on site here. Perfect, perfect. Let's head on. Thank you. You're welcome. We're at the early childhood uh, section of the CTC and joining us today is Danielle Reed. Danielle, you're a Mannheim Central School student. I am. And uh, Wendy Bertelli. And Wendy, you're the, you're, you lead this area, right? Yes. You're the supervisor instructor in this area. Yes, I'm the early childhood instructor. So let me start with you, Danielle. Why, why did you choose to come to the CTC? Um, well, I was looking into early child education, and for me to know more information about it, I decided to come to the center just to get a feel of what I was looking at. Do you know what? That is so important because I look at our, our 18, 17 year old kids and they are making career decisions. I mean, I don't know how you do that. It's not easy. So this is a great program to come in, to get your feet wet, to experience things, and decide if it's how you want to move forward in your career. So you're here, and tell us a little bit about a typical day for you. Um, a typical day will come in depending what rotation you're in. Um, my typical day looks like I'll come in, I'll do a class, and then I would have another class and come up to the daycare for an hour and a half. Depending on how well the children are, how if I'm in nap time, I would spend maybe up to two hours in the daycare every day. So. And, and here we have uh, infant to five-year-olds? Yes. Okay. Um, when you are done, when you graduate high school, do you envision going on now that you've experienced it? Yes, now that I know more about it, I made a better choice. I'm going to Alvernia for ECE and looking into being into an elementary with children. After oh, school, that's so. fantastic. <laughs> do you have any teachers in your family? 
No, I don't, so I'll be the first. So you're going to be the first one. That's fantastic. So, Wendy, tell, tell us a little bit about this program. The Early Childhood Program helps students explore early childhood as a whole. Early childhood education right now, the certification is pre-K through fourth grade. Mm -hmm. So here at the CTC, students spend time with infants, toddlers, preschoolers, Head Start children mm -hmm. and they have an elementary placement. This helps them further explore and decide what do I want to do. Every now and then we have a student who after this class decides, you know what, maybe I don't want to work with children. And that's okay mm -hmm. because then they're not going on for further education that they're not going to use. What percentage of your kids do you think do go on for further education? Um, this year we have 79% going on for further education. Oh, that's fantastic. And how many kids are involved in this program? There are 29 currently high school seniors and we have an adult student also. That's fantastic. And, and the children that are here are just children from the community? Yes. The, the Child Care Center, the Early Learning Center is open from 6.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. and they do serve the community. And it is so critical. Let's talk about early learning for children because it's, it's you know, we talk about in Harrisburg, I sit on the education committee up there and it's critical. That, kids get stimulation and, and things early on. Absolutely, and I think that's not only what students need to understand, but educators, legislators as a whole need to understand. 75% mm -hmm. of that child's brain is developed by age two. That's remarkable. 90% before they step foot in elementary school. So the preschool world, the infant, toddler, preschool, head start, that's what's so critical. We need to help them prepare so they are successful when they go to school. And they're not only here, but then they also do um, I'm gonna, I, internship, that's probably not the right word, but out in the actual school district, right? They do. Um, they spend five weeks here at the Mount Joy Early Learning Center with infants, five weeks with toddlers, five weeks with preschoolers. We also have a Head Start Center that is on site. They spend five weeks and then they are trained by the literacy coach, the reading specialist, the principal, and the guidance counselor at Donegal so Primary School. You are getting it school. all, Danielle. <laughs> they spend two hours a day paired with an elementary teacher where they work one-on-one -on -one and in small groups with the children. And really quickly, because this, this is so important, I think, just briefly, give me your background, because as I've talked to you even before we were on camera, I mean, your passion is overwhelming for what you do here. So what's your background? How did you get to be here? Okay, I was a director of two different child care centers, one of which was licensed for 222 children, and I had seven before and after school programs. I also taught a summer for Penn State. I taught a year at Millersville University, mm -hmm. and I taught at Harrisburg Area Community College. But this is where it counts. This is hands this on. This is my passion. It's that combination of of school theory and also the hands-on and the impact you make on students here their senior year where this is kind of like I tell them this is the first day of the rest of your life mm. you are starting your career while you're in high school all right so tell me your favorite part of the program Danielle my favorite part would be have to be coming in like every single day of my rotation I come in and the kids see you and their faces just brighten up because they mm -hmm. know a CTC student is coming mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. They know someone's coming to play with them, to help them with whatever they need. And it's nice just to go in and just see their face light up because they recognize you and they know you're coming to play with them. So well, that is my favorite part. I get to sit down on the floor and actually play with children. And just as I get to have conversations with them, I mean, they're just fun. It's wonderful. Yeah. So <laughs> They teach you something new every day. You got it. So thank you for sharing your portion of the program. We're going to another very uh, important part next. I think I'm going to head over to welding so thank okay. you for taking the time thank you, thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. so I just came from the early childhood education area where there was lots of energy and I'm assuming in the welding department there's gonna be lots of energy here too right just yes. a little different so we're joined by Joshua Painter and Joshua your school you, your home school is Cocalico School District Cocalico School District and John Boyer you are the uh, welding instructor the welding instructor and we're back with the principal again Mr. Smith so thank you for joining us this is such a critical um, portion of the school not that everyone is but as I am out in the private sector I mean welders are in huge demand why did you choose to come into this program? Uh, I chose to come into this program because it's a very hands-on program and I just love the hands-on part of it mm -hmm. and learn something new uh, that I can use in the future for my career. Did you, do you, I asked this everywhere I went, do you have any family members that are involved in this? Uh, yes, my uncle. 
to your yes. uncle. So you have a little, you know, have yeah. some knowledge about it. Because yeah. one of the other things I love about the school is that you can come in and you get hands-on experience to decide what you want to do. Because it's hard at 17, 18 years old to figure that out for the rest of your life. So um, how do you feel about leaving your home school your senior year to come here? Worthwhile? Uh, it's, yeah, I'd say it's worthwhile. I love it, honestly. I mean, I get to learn new things and new people. What's your plans when you leave here? Uh, I'd like to go out into the work field or possibly go back to school for like a um, like a pipe welding to okay. further my education. So you know what specifically what area. That's great. So, Mr. Boyer, tell me about you. You've been a teacher here for how many years? Uh, a little over 37 years. 37 years, and you're getting retired. But before that, were you actually out in the field? or? I uh, graduated from the program. I uh, was a student here when it was a half-day program. You're kidding. So I replaced my instructor, uh, was in the field for about six years, actually substituted for about a year or two, and then he indicated he was retiring and uh, asked me if I'd be interested. Yeah, it's not easy. I mean, I, we had some of the folks from the CTC down in Harrisburg lobbying because the regulations of keeping teachers, you know, with the furthering education, and the truth is you can oftentimes, it's not more financially uh, <laughs> uh, better for you to be out in the real world. Especially at this time right now because the welding, uh, the employment in welding, the fees are going up tremendously. Uh, a lot different than it was five, ten years ago. Absolutely. My, my future son-in-law graduated from the CDC as a machinist. Yep. And then he went to Thaddeus Stevens and he's out working, making fantastic money and loves what he's doing, which is critical. Yeah, I had a student come in uh, just within the last year. He graduated three years ago and he's in the three, six digits uh, salary already. It's, it's, it's yeah. wonderful. Let's talk about the program a little bit, Mr. Smith, if you don't mind. Sure. So, are you filled to capacity? We are. We actually have, we just expanded last year. We used to have 24 students. Last year we chose to expand to 40 and add a second instructor. And we're going to have two instructors next year also. And we still have a waiting list. So, this is a high demand field out there. The employers and businesses are asking for welders. And uh, we're trying to meet that demand the best we can. We're also opening a precision machining program. We closed it a few years ago because the demand wasn't there. But now businesses are coming. They're saying, you know, we need people in the manufacturing field. So we're reopening that in uh, September, well, August, end of August, September. And we'll have 20 students enrolled in that program. Well, and I toured, I was touring um, some of the businesses. And they actually have, they're stimu simulating welding there on in-house because their demand is so neat because they're trying to teach their own. But yes. you do have adult programs yeah, here. Oh, yeah, I should have mentioned that also. Yeah. We do have adult programs here that runs Monday through Thursday from uh, 4 o'clock to 9 o'clock. They're here. Um, teaching MIG, TIG, arc welding. Um, we're hoping to actually start an advanced welding program here in the fall also, and maybe get into some robotic welding, maybe some pipe welding training also. So we're also expanding that program at the same time. And they run, they run the whole year long. Yeah. And they run all year. All year. They're here all year long. So what, what's a typical, what's it take for them to do that? Is it two years or is it? Um, those programs, it all depends upon what they're coming here for. Okay. Some of them are our six month program, some of them are just a few week programs. If it's a specialized program, we kind of um, tailor made those to what the, the student needs and what the companies need out there. Well, I'm so glad you're doubling your size. And the, the truth is you could probably double again and still not fill the need out there for our folks. Yeah, that's correct. We're, we're hearing that the demand's out there, but you know, we, we have room for 40 students and, and we're at capacity, so. And again, as we talk about bringing business to the area, which is what we want and, and manufacturing jobs, mm -hmm. we got to have a, a, a staff there, a workforce ready to fill in and it's important what you're doing. So tell me, Josh, real quick, what's the favorite part of your day? Uh, my favorite part of the day is, I guess, when I begin to weld. I mean, I love just coming here and doing the hands-on part. I'm, yeah. It is exciting. I mean, yeah. you got the helmet on, right? Yeah. And the sparks are flying. <laughs> it's fun, I'd say. That's great. That's great. Well, thank you for uh, for spending some time with us. Any last thoughts? Um, I just mentioned that Josh is a district winner at the skills competition, and we'll be going to states. Yes. Well, okay. in two That's weeks. important. Yes. Yep. Yep. So where's states held for that? The state uh, conference is at Hershey. Uh, the competition will actually be held here. Oh, well, congratulations. Keep much. going. Good luck. Thank you. Thank state you. winner. He's hoping to go to nationals. <laughs> I am, oh, yes. Hoping he gets there, too. So. Oh, yes. my gosh. That's fantastic. Yeah, there's a real art to welding, isn't yes, there? Yes, it is. Yep. This, uh, the, the interesting year this year with the 40 students is that uh, we had a lot of students uh, advance 
uh, to a level sooner than we've had in the past year. So it's, it's a very good class this year. That's great. Well, and there's probably a little competition going on. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's yep. great. All right. Well, we're heading to one of my favorite places next. Sorry, guys, but uh, I'm going to where the food is. So over to Culinary next. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Personally, we are now in probably one of my favorite <laughs> parts of the school is the culinary uh, area and we're with Matt who you're Matt you're a student at Donegal yes. right and you're a senior who's uh, enrolled in the program and Chef Tara you've been here for how many years this is my fourth year your fourth year yes. so let's start with Matt a little bit tell me why you picked this program and decided to come to the CTC uh, I picked culinary as my number one choice because I enjoy cooking and uh, the job that I'm at now, uh, I cook for my residents at my job. And what I, is that job? Uh, Masonic Village in Elizabethtown. Oh, yep. fantastic. So do you envision staying with them and, and just moving up the ranks there? Or? Absolutely. Um, I've been there for almost two years now, and I plan on finishing out my career there. Oh, that's fantastic. So what made you have a desire to cook? What, what, what do you like about it? Um, I think what piqued my interest was the different techniques that I can do to prepare food and cook food and the way like I can present it on a plate and the way it looks. Well, we all like to do it three times a day yep, at least. Absolutely. Yeah. So Tara, how long, you've been here four years you said? Correct. And, and tell me your background, where did you come from? Um, well, I started out when I was probably seven years old cooking with my mom. They owned restaurants when I was younger. Um, I went to York, uh, the York Technical Institute. Yes, yep, yep. sorry, York That's Technical okay. Institute for Culinary Arts and Restaurant Management. Mm -hmm. And I worked in corporate dining for a very long time. Um, I was an executive chef, food service director, and then I came here to the school where yeah. it's my dream job, actually. This is something I've always wanted to do all my life. I've heard that across the board from all the instructors here. It's wonderful. So tell me a typical day here. There's, there's rotation, sure. Matt, right, from what you do. So you get a little piece of everything. I know you called it the front end and the back end yep. of the business. So maybe you want to explain a little bit about that. Sure. We have uh, front of house and back of house here. And the front of house uh, entails of being a server, running beverage, um, busing, you know, everything from uh, cleaning to stocking of the shelves of glasses, making sure we have everything that we need. And then back of house. And that's rotate. where the customers see you. Yes, yep. And then back of house is where, um, you know, we rotate through multiple stations. We have saute, we have bar grill, uh, griddle. Um, we even have dishwashing. So we all get to experience everything of every little part of the kitchen. From the start to finish. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So there's three kitchens back here, and then we have a fourth kitchen that's the pastry program, which is a whole different program. Correct. And, and the kids, when they come in, I mean, what's your thought of it compared to how they end up in the end when they're ready to go out into the world, right? Yes, in the beginning, we start out with basic, uh, our basic tasks, such as, you know, their tastes aren't developed in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then, so we learn how to do some cooking. But like I keep saying, this is culinary arts. It is not a cooking class. We wanna learn how to cook. You know, that's a different class. Culinary arts is artistic, so what we do is we play with our food and we create art, edible art, where you have to actually use all five senses to actually, you know, enjoy that one item. Now, this time of year, we start out with students who can't even boil water. And at this time of year, they are doing fine dining, plating, and using their food as artistic uh, pieces that we present to our customer. It's fantastic and, and people may not know in the district that are watching this but you actually have a restaurant we here do. on site where Infusions. the general public can come in. Actually my whole staff came over the other day I stayed back and watched the office but I mean the food is outstanding you're doing something right. So is there certain hours just so the public knows go over that a little bit so the public knows when yes. they can come in. Tuesdays we have high tea and that is from 11 to 12.30, mm -hmm. our seating. And Thursdays and Fridays, we have an all-inclusive menu, a prefix menu, 
and that is from 11 to 12:30 as well for so seating. So people make reservations for that, or they don't they have just... to make reservations, okay. but it is suggested because of our uh, some of our Nocti and other programs that we do, like Taste of Success mm. and Fly on the Run. Our restaurant may or may not be open for that day, so you may want to call and make sure that we're open. I'm hungry. <laughs> and then you also have a little deli where people could just pop in and get quiche or, or, or different pastries to buy and walk out the door. Yep, quiche, side salads, any type of entree we've been working on. So we'll practice things for our Nocti, like uh, chicken florentine or apple crostata. We'll sell that in our case. Um, the baking and pastry, they sell cookies and cakes and all kinds of fun edible things. That's wonderful. Matt, what's your favorite thing to cook so far? Uh, my favorite thing to cook would be uh, a chicken stir fry with um, teriyaki sauce. Oh, I'd eat that. Yep. <laughs> I'd eat most things you cook. Oh, awesome. <laughs> but I thank you for spending a, a few moments with us, let people see, uh, again, the, the important work that you're doing. You're, Getting ready to, everybody likes to eat, and it's so important that we have people uh, who are ready to go out in that workforce That's and great take care studio. of that. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So in our last few minutes, I think it's important that people um, hear your final thoughts on the CTC. There's some really great things that we saw here, all the great programs, but the bottom line is, is kids have a lot of options when they are done at the school. Absolutely. At Lancaster County Career and Technology Center, uh, we offer such a wide variety of programs that allow opportunities and decisions for students. They can go directly in the workforce making excellent salaries or they can go right into post-secondary education. Most of our programs have uh, articulated credit that students come out of our programs with anywhere from nine to 20 plus credits. That's fantastic because we all know how expensive college credits Absolutely. are. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, and to finalize, there's a, some new, uh, new programs on the horizon. I know we talked a little bit uh, about one of them coming up, but just give sure, us your yeah, thoughts. This, this is a very exciting time for us. Uh, we got a uh, precision machining and computer aided manufacturing program opening this fall. We're getting an advanced welding program. That's gonna be an additional program for our adult programs and our high school students will take advantage of that. That'll be also starting this fall. Um, we have a logistics program up in Brownstown starting up for some of our students up there. And we're also exploring other programs like maybe uh, cyber technology or cybersecurity and networking type programs. We're still exploring those across the system here. So um, we're trying to meet the need of the county here. And you this sure is, uh, do. Uh, and not only that, but we can't forget ag because, uh, you know, our number one industry, you do have ag programs. I know we're going to be out of time to talk about them, but they're important. They're very important. And it's a, it's a growing industry in Lancaster County, actually across the, the country right now. And it's need to have better practices in ag because of the food production. That's right. All right. And not just 18 year olds, adult programs are here. So. Absolutely. Thank you. And I thank you uh, for opening the doors and letting the 37th district see what you're all about. Um, well, but thank you. You bet. You bet. You have a great day. And thank you for joining us again on the Legislative Report. I'm Mindy Fee from the 37th District. You can always reach out to me. I have an office in Mannheim and I have an office up in Denver. So any concerns, please let you know. Please know my door is always open. Thank you. Thank you.